Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another body armor test for you. Okay, we're going to be posing sort of a bit of a question here in this particular video. There's a good bit of controversy out there on this particular plate right here. This is the Battle Steel Level 4 uh, polyethylene ceramic composite plate. Um, this plate has a pretty unique distinction in that it is one of the most affordable plates out on the market right now. These things are like somewhere around the ballpark of 100 bucks. Uh, so for a level four plate, that's a pretty tall order, multi-hit uh, rated, as well as being only five and a half pounds. It's a relatively lightweight level four plate. And uh, we're gonna be throwing some very terrible <laughs> threats uh, at this particular plate today. Uh, we do have a couple of them we're gonna test a bit. And for some reason, this particular armor draws a heck of a lot of hate from people. And I don't know what it is. I mean, it is Chinese, it's imported. Uh, so some people have, you know, issues about it being an imported plate or whatever. Uh, some people sort of go towards the lack of NIJ certification or the, 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 the results of the NIJ certification not being what they say they are or something or the claims out there that they could possibly be. Uh, look, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna shoot the freaking plates and see what happens. We're gonna test them in our own way. Uh, we're gonna only shoot from 10 feet away. All right, I've got a rubber dummy here. He is solidly mounted up. We're gonna be throwing some black tip Garand ammo uh, out of, at, at this thing. So this is a 30 alt six black tip. So this is a really, really nasty threat. We've also got some penetrating light ball that we're gonna shoot out of a full length M91 service rifle. So we got a few really interesting threats we're throwing at it. And uh, we're just gonna proceed to pummel this thing with all kinds of stuff and just see what happens. All right, we're gonna go out of the gate running here. We're gonna run the black tip, 30 alt six uh, here. We're gonna do a couple of shots here. Now I'm gonna shoot these kind of in a bit of a quadrant so that we're giving each round an individual place to sort of land a little bit. We are gonna, of course, pelt the plate with a whole bunch of stuff with a machine gun here in a minute, just for fun. Uh, it's worth noting, uh, I don't have an M1 Garand. I know, you can go ahead and get the, the pitchforks and torches out, but the barrel on this particular rifle is a little bit shorter than a standard Garand, so full disclosure. Uh, this is a Mauser Model 66, so oddly enough, uh, we're going to use a German rifle instead of an American one, but hey, sue me, whatever. Here we go. And we're only 10 feet away. Uh, with a lot of the certification, um, especially on some of the other ones I've seen, most people shoot from about 50 feet away. We're only 10 feet away, so we're going to get in really close and just see what the heck happens. And look, the way that we're looking at this, the plate either stops a bullet or it doesn't. I mean, that's, that's what this test is. Like, we're just seeing if it'll stop the threat. A level four plate is supposed to stop black tip 30 alt six, which is a substantial threat. This, this projectile will shoot through some crazy stuff. So here we go. You guys ready? Okay. Well, that's kind of close to the edge right there. I got my doubts. What do you think, Chad? I think that one on the, now look, if that one on the edge didn't make it through, I'm gonna be really impressed. I, I might have gotten close to the edge there. Ugh. Let's see. Okay, I'm pretty skeptical about this. Then again, I'm always a skeptic when it comes to armor testing. Let's have a look, all right? Now, to be completely fair, um, I did get pretty close to the edge on that one. But that's one complaint that I've seen a lot of people stage about various armor tests is that oftentimes, maybe not more often than not, but sometimes the shots don't always wind up near the edge and that's where you're gonna really see a little bit of a issue potentially with certain armor is as it gets close to the edge if it's gonna really still stop the projectile. Because one of the things that I've seen about various armor sometimes they'll put a lot more padding and foam here on the outside of the plate in order to make the plate a little bit more drop suitable because the issue with ceramic plates is if you drop them and you have a, an issue with the structural integrity then the plate may not perform to its full uh, you know ability that it's supposed to perform to so did that shot on the edge stop or did it not let's have a look so our Okay, all right, this shot here that was here, you know, within the, you know, pretty far in on the plate, 
it stopped it. There is a little bit of back deformation. Now the shot up near the edge looks like it probably made it on through. Um, man, I think, oh look, look at that. All right, hang on, I've got some debris here. Let me, let me grab this and see what we got. Okay, so the shot that hit near the edge, I've got some crumpled bits of ceramic and I've got a piece of jacket, but you know, it's, it's anybody's guess if that projectile made it through because it sure doesn't look like it did, but I don't see a projectile in there. And on the back end, we do have some back deformation that would be consistent with the other shot. If we look at them and compare them, it doesn't look like the projectile actually made it through. It just hit so close to the edge that it worked its way out of the edge. Okay, and as I mentioned that foam earlier, you can see some bits of foam popping out. So there is foam in the edge of the plate. So I'm gonna call that one a tie because you might, I mean, I don't think the projectile went through the torso. It might have skimmed and made it out of the side, but the projectile did not penetrate the plate. It did make it out of the edge, it looks like. We're gonna chalk that up to my crappy shooting and we're gonna continue the test, but just keep that in mind. Um, that's an interesting result. I actually expected that projectile to just go right on through being so close to the edge, but it does appear that when looking at this entrance and exit, it performed like it's supposed to perform even though the shot was near the edge and that's with the worst threat. So I think that gives us some pretty good data to go on that this stuff might actually be pretty good for what it is. All right, in our flight of deadliness around the world, we've arrived in Russia and we've got a M91 service rifle here with a 29 inch barrel and we're using some uh, light ball here. It does have a mild iron uh, penetrator in it, uh, 7.62 by 54 rimmed uh, Russian service cartridge. We're gonna put two rounds in there. I'm gonna try to put these in the center. I mean, and when I point this rifle, I'm already like two thirds of the way there. If I put a bayonet on this thing, I could just go boop and just poke it, you know? All right, here we go. I hope I don't miss this close. Okay, here we go. I had to slap her around a little bit. Okay, number two. Woo! Ah! All right. That's a nasty threat. Let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look. Again, I remain cautiously optimistic, but skeptical. Okay, here we go. The grand reveal. Wow, little back deformation, certainly not going to be fun, but it did stop those threats just fine. Nothing made it through. And uh, one thing I, I do wanna make note of here is that uh, when I shot this armor from only 10 feet away, there was a considerable amount of ceramic material that made it out and, and kind of like a spalling, if you will. And it flew everywhere. We could see like little bits of pieces going everywhere and it's all over the place in front of us here. So, I mean, not that you care about the safety of the person shooting you if you're wearing the armor. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that, but uh, just know that anytime you're shooting this type of stuff, guys, if you do decide to mess with this on your own, bear in mind that, you know, stuff flies out, be cautious, wear proper eye pro, all that good stuff. Um, like we're all doing, of course. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. So, you know, what I really wanted to see was how well this armor would stop the threats that it's rated to stop. All right, it's multi-hit rated. Now granted, we didn't throw a ton, like 15 shots of each caliber at this thing. Uh, but I think what I'm gonna do, is I've, I've got a P90, all right? Now I've only got the VMAX, the blue tip stuff. It's moving pretty fast. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the P90, we're gonna shoot 50 rounds. I'm gonna try to keep all 50 rounds right here. And we're gonna see if we can eat away at the center of this plate and get through, just because. I must selfishly say, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm having fun right now. This is work. All right, ready? Here we go. Okay. 
Yeehaw! <laughs> Woo, yeah, P90, baby. Well, I guess if you find yourself on the uh, wrong end of the Secret Service, that's uh, one potential scenario you might need this armor for, right? Let's see if it made it through. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Well, that P90, it's like uh, releasing a pack of Angry Hornets. It's the Angry Hornet gun. All right. 50 rounds of 5.7. I'm going to pull the armor out of there and have a look. Doesn't look like anything made it through. Let's have a look. Okay, we got fragments, of course. I'm looking in the carrier to see if there's any spalling or, or jacket fragments making it out the back. There's a few spots that look like maybe something got through, but let's see. think anything made it through I think it stopped everything look at that I mean there's a few spots on the carrier where it is ripped up pretty bad but that could just be from back face deformation and not from the projectiles actually getting through I mean there's a few areas that look like possibly I mean there's some fabric material I don't think anything made it through Wow it's pretty insane. And look at that. Look at that. Look at all those pieces of lead coming out of there. That's a bad day. Very bad day. So look, um, I have a fresh plate. This is what we're gonna do to sort of put this thing to bed. All right, I don't have another one of these carriers, but I might flip this one around. I'm gonna take the uh, black tip uh, 30 alt six and I'm gonna shoot several shots. I'm gonna try to put them in, into quadrants, but I really wanna see that black tip get stopped a few more times. I do have another plate. We're gonna go ahead and perform that now. Really impressive result though. Pretty tough plate. I mean, for the money, not a bad option, okay? All right, three more. <laughs> I don't know, man. I got my doubts about this, but you know what? We're just gonna observe. That's all we can do. I don't know, man. That armor is wrecked. <laughs> well, goodbye strap. Well, this strap didn't fare too well either. Yeah, this is the back of the armor. It's kind of all we had left, you know. We're not really professional scientists. We just sort of just work with what we got. Okay. Ooh, Nelly. Okay. Ah. Okay, there's the back. We see some obvious ripping that we would expect to see for some back face deformation. I want you to notice these entries. Okay, see how gnarly they look? We shot this plate six times. We noticed this entry was not quite so interesting looking. It's just kind of flat looking, but notice how close it is in proximity to the previous hit. Notice how far apart these are and look at how that entrance looks. It appears that one of our rounds made it through the plate. That's why this entry is so sedate looking. If we look on the other end of the plate, 
the round did make it through because of the close proximity to the first shot. So just bear that in mind. They are multi-hit rated, but if the shots are close together, obviously that ceramic composite is damaged from the gunshot. Look at this back for deformation. So if another round were to impact where that deformation is, there's a solid chance that that round will not uh, be stopped by the plate. And oddly enough, to verify what we just came up with, we did locate a core. Okay, so this is a steel core from a black tip Garand round, and it did make it through the plate on that shot. Look at that, boop, right through there. Okay, so just keep that in mind, all right? There's always gonna be some failure point in any armor, no matter what, right? Whether it's shooting it near the edge, and then that edge being really weak, right? I can even feel as I press this, that I can feel the ceramic is shattered. So that's why they tell you not to drop your plates because it damages the ceramic. You can even feel this cushioning right here that they added on this plate. And I would imagine that is to help uh, soften the blow if it were to you know, hit the ground or, some, or hit some concrete and potentially keep your uh, ceramic from getting cracked. But the minute you shoot a plate, the entire plate, even if it is multi-hit rated, is going to have some type of uh, compromised uh, integrity, right? So the fact that it ate these five, one got through, just wanted to share that result. It's safe to say, for a five and a half pound plate for the money, I think it's a pretty good buy. Um, granted, there are a lot of armor options out there that are excellent. They do represent a very different cost. Uh, you know, like some of the HESCO offerings, there's tons of other armor makers. We've tested some of the Safe Life stuff before. We've tested Spartan armor. We've tested the AR-500 armor stuff. So there's other armor that's out there. There's RMA stuff that we've tested, and we're going to be doing more testing on the RMA stuff. And this isn't the first battle steel we're going to test. We're going to do more of their plates in some of the lower threat levels. And whenever they introduce a new plate, we'll probably check them out. But what we try to do with these videos, guys, we just try to shoot and observe and you see what we see. And that's all we can really do here, right? So don't get bent up in the weeds over cost and construction and where something is made. Just look at the results. And if you're happy with the way it performs, then that should give you an idea of what you can expect out of that armor, right? Um, there are some really great options out there that cost five times as much money. I mean, if you want the best there is, you can certainly spend more money and get, you know, plates that float, Okay, you know, there's super uber buoyant uh, plates that have like level four protection, but they'll float in water and stuff like that. I mean, there's all kinds of interesting armor technology that you can go that route if you want. So don't think that it only has to exist here. It can go completely down the rabbit hole, but be that as it may, for someone that's looking for an affordable option in a plate, I think for a hundred, hundred and nine dollars, I think is about the, the retail price on the level four. I think it's a pretty solid buy for the money considering. I think it's a, a, a pretty good contender, okay? Guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Many more on the way. I love testing armor because it's, it's literally where the rubber meets the road, like just watching bullets hitting things. It's just so cool to me. I love shooting armor and seeing what happens with it. So I hope you had as much fun as I did in this video because I know I had a great time. Thank you very much. I want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchased man cans. Also, you can get some awesome t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc. If you want to support the channel, you love what we do, those are the most direct ways that you can support us. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.